One of the most interesting things when it comes to video games are the mysteries that surround the games we play, and this is definitely true when it comes to Pokemon. For as kid-friendly as it is, Pokemon definitely still has its fair share of mysteries, which is why in today's video, we're going to be looking at five mysterious things in Pokemon that haven't been explained. Let's begin with something newer, and that would be the case of Mel Metal. This Pokemon, along with its pre-evolution Meltan, are actually very mysterious, because we don't even know what region they're supposed to originate from. They very randomly debuted in Generation 7 in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, but weren't claimed by Kanto as a Pokemon that comes from that region, and also weren't claimed by Alola either, which was obviously the region that was introduced in Gen 7. Additionally, they haven't been claimed by any of the featured regions of Gen 8, namely Galar and Sinnoh, so as of right now, they're a pair of Pokémon without a home. So, what region are these Pokémon supposed to be from, and what has been the purpose of withholding that information from us for this long? There is actually a decent possibility here that we can speculate about, though, and that is that Meltan and Melmetal actually come from our world. They originate from Pokemon Go, after all, so it would make sense that their home region hasn't been identified because they're actually from our own world instead. Gen 7 was the generation that opened up the idea of multiple worlds and dimensions within Pokemon, so could our real world be canon to the Pokemon universe with the introduction of these Pokemon? And if so, what does that entail? Even if that was the definitive answer, it almost brings up more questions than it provides answers, and it's one of the more perplexing mysteries in recent Pokémon history. That's not even the only mystery as it pertains to these Pokémon, however, as in the Let's Go games, Melmetal can mysteriously be seen changing its body color from silver to more of a gold color whenever it gets near the crystals in Cerulean Cave. No explanation is given for why this happens, and it only makes this Pokemon all the more perplexing, especially when it seems fairly apparent that there is some kind of reason for it that the developers just aren't telling us. And as Meltan and Melmetal slowly move more out of the spotlight as time goes on, it becomes more and more unclear if we'll ever get the answers to these questions in the future. Another more recent one of a similar variety concerns Calyrex from the Crown Tundra expansion of Pokémon Sword and Shield. As the cover Pokémon of this expansion, Calyrex was obviously important to what the Crown Tundra offered, but one thing about it that we never got to learn more about was its mysterious Dynamax aura. Whenever a Pokémon Dynamaxes, it radiates a glowing red aura around its body, but when Calyrex does this, it glows with a blue aura instead. Calyrex doesn't have any apparent connection to the Dynamax phenomenon that we are told about in the games, and this oddity isn't even so much as mentioned by anyone in the game that I'm aware of. It simply is just there with no context or explanation whatsoever. Just like Melmetal's color change, there is obviously an intentional reason of some kind that caused the developers to include this in the game, but what could that reason be? As mentioned, Calyrex doesn't have a specified tie to Dynamaxing in any way, so it doesn't seem like the kind of Pokémon that would have this sort of thing going for it. Since the ability to Dynamax originates from Eternatus, however, it does make me wonder if Calyrex somehow has the ability to Dynamax independently of Eternatus's influence, and that is what gives it the different color. Similar to how Rayquaza can Mega Evolve without the use of a Megastone. 
If that were true though, it would kind of break the concept of Dynamaxing as we know it, since it is all supposed to run through Eternatus. So even that idea seems kind of uncertain. And now that we're officially going to be moving on to Gen 9 soon, once Pokemon Scarlet and Violet get here in the not too distant future, it's very unlikely that we're going to be revisiting this strange phenomenon anytime soon. Now, as talked about as it has been over the years, I couldn't possibly talk about mysterious things in Pokemon without mentioning the Ghost Girl of Pokemon X and Y. You probably all know the story by now, but just as a refresher, there is an event in Pokemon X and Y where, upon arriving in Lumio City and visiting one of its many buildings, you'll have an eerie encounter with a ghost girl. After exiting the elevator on the upper floor of this building, you won't be able to move and the lights start to flash on and off. Before long, a ghost girl appears and begins to float all around you, and eventually floats away, but not before saying, no, you're not the one. Everything goes back to normal after this, and the ghost girl is never spoken about or seen from again, with no indication whatsoever of what just happened. There have been countless attempts to explain what is occurring here, or who the one is, with no likely conclusion able to be reached by anyone to this point. Furthermore, this also began a trend in Pokemon games of more ghost girls appearing, as we have seen one in almost every game and generation since Pokemon X and Y. At this point, it does seem to be an official trope of sorts that Game Freak want to include in each new game, and therefore it could just be a fun ongoing thing, but it also shows how the X and Y Ghost Girl is still very much on Game Freak's radar. Additionally, the thing that really has me scratching my head personally about this is the phrase, no, you're not the one. It's clearly referring to someone, so it implies specificity, but we're nearly 10 years removed from Pokemon X and Y, and still no closer to learning who this one could be. A big part of me wants to believe that it's something that was just included for fun, and the trend has simply been included in subsequent games as a part of that fun, but I also feel like there's definitely some kind of reason for why this moment was included in the first place, and big or small, I hope that someday we'll be able to learn what the true meaning behind all this ghostly stuff really is. If you can believe it though, there's something else in X and Y that is arguably even more mysterious than the Ghost Girl incident, and it also occurs in Lumio City. At Lumio Station, there is a secret note that can be read on the backside of one of the train station's schedule boards. Completely out of view of the player, if you happen to just stumble upon it, the note will read, I'm going to go for help wait in the usual place. Just like the ghost girl, there is no resolution to this note whatsoever, and no sign of a further connection to it anywhere in the game. We never get to learn who wrote the note, or where the usual place is, but what piques my interest the most with this is how it sounds like whoever this note is addressed to is either hurt or in danger, which adds a whole new level of intrigue to this scenario. Who is the note addressed to, and what are they in danger from? Why do they need help? Who is the person who wrote the note? There are so many questions here, and while initially it seems like this might be the start of a side quest of some kind, it ultimately never amounts to anything. The specific nature of it, however, tells me that there is some sort of answer here, even if it's one that Game Freak never meant to answer themselves. 
In contrast to the Ghost Girl scenario, which I could see being done as a just for fun thing, this note seems to be a little more direct in its purpose, as if it does actually go somewhere, as if it does have a backstory or origin of some kind that were just not shown in the games. If I had to take a shot in the dark at what it could mean, I would say that it's very possible that many of these mysterious things in X and Y were actually possibly a setup for the next Kalos games, and were possibly going to be answered or resolved in the infamous, and now confirmed to be cancelled, Pokemon Z. While we will most likely never know for sure if this is the case at all, it seems very possible that Pokemon X and Y could have had so many of these mysterious elements to them because they were being set up to be resolved or at least revisited in the eventual Pokemon Z, a game that ultimately never happened. That's honestly as close as I can get though, as far as explaining what might be happening with this particular mystery, which, if true, could have been amazing, and it's potentially one more reason why the loss of Pokemon Z is so, so devastating. While X and Y are certainly full of mysteries, so are other Pokemon games, like, for instance, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Something that can easily go overlooked in these games is the fact that you can actually find an odd keystone in Twinleaf Town, along the edge of the pond at the south end of town. Now, at face value, this is a pretty neat find that, like I said, could easily be overlooked, but if you actually spend some time to think about why this is here, it potentially has some dark implications, and some mysterious ones as well. The reason why is because the odd keystone is the item that is tied to Spiritum. Quite literally, in fact, as it is the stone that Spiritum is trapped inside of. This is due to the fact that Spiritomb is a Pokemon that is comprised of 108 spirits who were all bound to this odd keystone. This background has allowed Game Freak to do some dark storytelling with Spiritomb, like in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for example, where a Spiritomb can be found at Sea Mauville, and it's mentioned in documents that an odd keystone was once ordered to Sea Mauville from the Sinnoh region. When you later find out after reading more of these documents that Pokemon were actually being killed at Seamawville in order to harvest their infinity energy, it becomes implied that the odd keystone was needed at Seamawville because the researchers there were using it to store the souls of the dead Pokemon that they were killing in order to harvest their infinity energy. Yeah, when I said dark, I wasn't kidding. So the point is, whenever you find an odd keystone, or a spiritum, it's no joke, and there is a good chance that some messed up stuff happened to cause it to be there. Which brings us back to Twinleaf Town. It doesn't seem like mere coincidence that an odd keystone is just sitting here. They're pretty rare artifacts, and Twinleaf Town is nowhere near the Hollow Tower on Route 209 that you put the keystone into, so it must have been brought to Twinleaf Town intentionally for some sort of purpose, a purpose which is still a mystery to us. But, with C. Mauville's odd keystone as one of the primary precedents we have for this sort of thing, we definitely cannot assume that it has an innocent reason for being there. Just like at C. Mauville, someone could have gathered the souls of dead people or Pokemon inside of it, but then needed to get rid of it, ultimately deciding to dump it in the quiet, small town of Twinleaf, which is out and away from everything else and is a place that is remote enough that the former owner may have felt safe by leaving it in a secluded location such as this, where no one would be likely to find it. However, that is just my best guess, and we don't know the actual reason why this odd keystone can be found here, and unfortunately, we probably never will. 
But as I said, the odds are that it's not a good reason, and that is what makes this so intriguing. What are your thoughts on all of these mysteries, though? Do you have any possible answers yourself? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new for more content. With that said, I will be back with another new video very soon. Thanks so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it. And until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.